Welcome back to Taiwan Outlook. Our guest today is Charlene Huang. She is a very professional and senior interpreter in Taiwan. Charlene, we've been talking about the, uh, the industry, uh, interpretation industry in Taiwan. Apparently, uh, the future prospect of that industry has to do with Taiwan's internationalization. How do you see Taiwan's internationalization in recent years? Um, you could say at least Taiwanese people through all kinds of media, they are being exposed to more and more international information. Mm -hmm. And through the conferences I have been able to serve at, um, they are getting this um, practice, theory and practice of an international um, trend. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think it takes a long time mm -hmm. for people to really take in to digest all this uh, so-called international foreign language mm -hmm. uh, just find some a lot of things because it has a cultural background so it's very difficult to convey for Taiwanese people to understand an understatement yeah. of an English person that probably takes some um, abilities mm -hmm. of, of proficiency in mm -hmm. the English language so that's what I come across sometimes in a, in a conference, in a simultaneous interpretation situation, the speaker tells a joke, but the jokes are very different, difficult to translate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but do, under the tyranny of time, I could only say, the speaker just told a joke, uh, <laughs> please laugh now. <laughs> and that's truly uh, difficult. So uh, for Taiwanese people, because nowadays the, uh, they are promoting the so-called Taiwanese consciousness. Mm -hmm. You yeah. want to look inside to understand more about our own roots, our mm -hmm. own history, our own culture. But at the same time, we have to open up. We have to expand our horizons. Mm -hmm. I believe these two are That's not uh, in conflict with each other. So yeah. they can be can be uh, carried out mm -hmm. at the same time. To engage internationally, you have to overcome not just language barriers, but also cultural mm -hmm. and so on, historical barriers as well. From your own personal experience, how do you think that we can do to overcome uh, barriers in addition to the language one? Have an open mind. Mm -hmm. People need to have an open mind. But then, uh, we have, we all have our limitations, yeah. intellectual limitations, physical limitations, time mm -hmm. limitations. So for a person trying to understand the world better, try to not get surprised by things happening around mm -hmm. him or her, um, uh, uh, maintaining an open mind is important. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, the government can do anything to, you know, help our people more internationalized, open-minded to the outside world? I believe the government is doing a lot already. For example, we have this program uh, conducted in English and broadcast to all around the world that's already doing something. Mm -hmm. And you've been interacting with the other foreigners coming to Taiwan. And, and when they go back, you know, what do you think they, they bring back with you know, the impression of Taiwan? Um, usually the number one impression is there's a lot of moped on the streets. <laughs> And I will tell them, Taiwan, we have uh, 23 million people. We have 12 million motorcycles on the road. And they will all be impressed. Mm -hmm. Especially in Taipei City, right? Yeah. And how about other impressions? Nice food and so on? Taiwan. Nice food, uh, people's uh, hospitality, and especially the uh, entrepreneurship, and the, the drive to go mm -hmm. forward to to try to uh, better oneself mm -hmm. and financially or spiritually. Yeah, what's the most fun part of you know, being in this business you know, after 50 years of serving people in this industry? That I get to learn about uh, different fields in depth, uh, very much like a journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, that you, when you cover a, a subject, you have to learn about this field uh, very deep and in order to deliver a good interpretation. Mm -hmm. but, but then the next day you move on to another subject, you have to collect the information about it. So I always say I have a removable hard disk here. <laughs> Today I'm talking about interpretation. Tomorrow I may be talking about um, uh, AIDS, mm -hmm. the, the, the pandemic around the world, or uh, the, the week after that, I may be talking about uh, trafficking in person. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy, in fact, I treasure this opportunity to 
fully appreciate the inner workings of a, a particular subject matter of a particular field and have fun with it and then come out and then move mm -hmm. on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, for people like me with short attention span, short memory, Interpretation is an ideal calling. Good. But there must be also some uh, distressing experiences and so on. What's the most, you know, the, the toughest part of uh, doing this job? Mm -hmm. Knowing that my brain is aging by the seconds, <laughs> <laughs> that gradually yeah. I know I, I miss maybe a few words in the speaker's uh, words, uh, but, but because of the time, I will not be able to go back to make a full, complete rendition. Mm -hmm. so, but I always try to drive for the uh, complete uh, rendition mm -hmm. of everything the speaker said. I try to have, I try to include in my, my, mm -hmm. my interpretation. Mm -hmm. But knowing that my body is uh, aging, by the by the second yeah. not just by the day uh gradually i i know i need to you know, compensate that with my experience yeah. with my way of uh, paraphrasing mm -hmm. in order to still deliver a high caliber mm -hmm. performance yeah you just cannot do a perfect job you know always there's some you know thing you can improve all the time right but we need to strive for yeah, a that's perfect right. job that's right yeah. and for those people especially young people who are thinking about going into this business, what would be your advice for them? Make sure you have the passion for it to, mm -hmm. to endure all the difficulty and challenges uh, along the way, but at the same time, you want to um, improve your language skill in, mm -hmm. in both source and uh, your uh, target language. Mm -hmm. I think your native tongue is uh, Mandarin. Mandarin. But I think you speak wonderful English. How do you improve your English? You know, for our, you know, give us some experience or you know, suggestions to our you know, young viewers. Oh. There's still a lot of room for improvement yeah. in my English. Mm. But I try to think in English, try to dream in English, <laughs> and watch a lot of um, English uh, TV programs mm -hmm. and read widely. Yeah, but do you think that the English environment in Taiwan is good enough for those young kids to practice to improve their English? Oh, there's plenty of materials available in the bookstore, on the internet for people to immerse themselves in English. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of material. Yeah, and overall, I think uh, people are improving and, and trying to improve their English uh, day and night and so on. So apparently in the future people are, will, are be, will be more able to speak better English. So how will that affect this industry? I believe the uh, business opportunity is always there mm -hmm. because in this uh, international communications there are always um, a higher caliber, higher caliber mm -hmm. works that requires people with high caliber yeah. expertise to yeah. do the communication. Well, of course, I welcome the day when everybody in Taiwan, they can speak English, they can converse um, um, fluently with foreigners, like just like people in Singapore yeah. do. Um, but I believe with um, like, or thinking with something more sophisticated, mm -hmm. the subject, um, you still need uh, interpretation. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, people having uh, meetings at the United Nations yeah. in this uh, European Union. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I know that some scientists are working on some sort of machine or gadget, mm. you know, uh, with the hope that in the end, you just need to bring a you know, small gadget <laughs> and the gadget can translate different languages. Do you think that's a wishful thinking or that will become realized in the future? somewhere in a distant future <laughs> because this kind of a gadget, this kind of a translation device uh, uh, belongs to something called artificial intelligence. You need to be able to judge uh, which word to take. You know, there are five meanings in the dictionary, That's so right. which word to take? Like there's one word in English with eight possibilities in Chinese, mm -hmm. like cousin. Yeah. So in our language there are eight possibilities. <laughs> so would, would the translation machine know? Uh -huh. I doubt it. But still, you know, th through the improvement of uh, context understanding, I believe um, ultimately 
eventually there will be some kind of uh, translation devices that's um, sufficient for like travelers mm -hmm. to go around the world without much difficulties in communicating. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, special on-site experiences that you might share with us, especially uh, the most interesting part or most uh, you know, you know, distressing part of you know, doing translations? I always believe in uh, carrying out my job with a very pleasant manner, mm -hmm. uh, dignified, and with composure. There was one incident. I was uh, doing consecutive uh, interpretation mm -hmm. for the deputy chair of the European Parliament. And he said something about, mm, the Chinese Communist Party was doing these bad things. It's a, it's a conference about human rights. Mm -hmm. And in my Mandarin rendition, somehow, it, through a slip of tongue, I said, Dong Guo Kuomintang is doing this KMT, bad thing. Yeah. Yes, KMT, the Taiwan Nationalist, the former rule, ruling party of Taiwan. And then the audience just fell dead silent. <laughs> and then I realized I, I missed. But then I have to keep my composure. So I said, just checking to see if I, you are paying attention. <laughs> and then we move on. Yeah. And for those people, especially uh, in, in this kind of bargaining or negotiation, you know, the uh, in translation must be very interesting. For instance, if they are fighting against each other, you know, arguing and so on, how do you compose yourself, you know, in, during the conversation? Oh yes, I've been in that kind of situation. Um, it was a board meeting, small group, mm -hmm. and two of the directors was just don't see eye to eye to each <laughs> other, so they are criticizing each each other. And one was one. Uh, could only speak uh, Taiwanese or Mandarin, mm -hmm. and the other speaks good English. So uh, it seems like uh, the person who could speak English has an advantage because uh, he could communicate to all the members of the board, whereas uh, this uh, Chinese-speaking, Taiwanese-speaking mm -hmm. director has to go through me mm -hmm. to, to get the message across. Um, so he was saying something like, uh, this is a bad experience. It, it's as if uh, you, are, you, you, you are being raped. <laughs> oh, and, but for me, I, I could not use the word rape. I, I just say, you will feel you are being sexually assaulted. Uh -huh. um, but this kind of a toned down, watered down the version, at that moment, I don't know whether this is the best rendition mm -hmm. because maybe if I just go ahead and say rape, yeah. that will get everybody to pay attention, to know, okay, mm -hmm. this is exactly what the, the uh, speaker said. But, so a lot of time, this is a, a, a decision made in split seconds. Yeah. So if, if I don't choose the right word, mm -hmm. I have to live with that for mm -hmm. the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. In addition to a correct you know, a language translation, rendition, and so on, how about expression, you know, a verbal expression, language expression, when you are doing this in a translation? Yes, interpretation. Uh, to a certain extent, it's a performing art. Yeah. You know, it's like you play an um, instrument, yeah. or it's like uh, you are uh, an actor on the stage in the drama. So you are getting into the speaker's mind, getting into his shoes in order to convey the information, not just the context, but also the, the emotion part. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the in, uh, project I get uh, People are talking about serious projects, so mm -hmm. there's uh, very little emotions involved. Mm -hmm. But for motivational speech, mm -hmm. when the speakers are moving the hand with a lot of uh, body gestures, yeah. then I need to also to inject some energy into my rendition to, to sustain the momentum. Mm -hmm. and how do you do that? Uh, oh, but, Try to raise your voice or something like that? Yeah, but because by understanding what the speakers say, I could relate to this emotion level. So very much I am also um, I'm getting emotional myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the motivational type. Mm -hmm. But there's another uh, type of emotional situation uh, when there was a, a conference about the comfort women, you know, uh -huh. the young women being drafted by Japanese mm -hmm. army to serve the soldiers as uh, sex slaves. Mm -hmm. And when they talk about it, my, my throat choked up. Uh, I could not say anything because the tears swelled up in my e eyes. And 
but still I have to regain my composure and move on. Mm -hmm. it, it's important, mm -hmm. my audience, my, the participants who relies on my translations to understand what's being said. So mm -hmm. I have no su such luxury to, to just break down and cry. Yeah. I, I Sh cannot allow myself. Okay. Shayun, thank you very much for coming to our program and sharing with us your experiences in this industry. And thank you for letting us know better about this interpretation industry. Thank you much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. And thank you for watching Taiwan Outlook and see you next week.